اعوذ باللہ السمیع العلیم من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمدللہ رب العالمین والصلاة والسلام على سیدنا محمد و اہل بیته الطیبین الطاہرین ولعنت اللہ على قتلتهم و اعدائهم اجمعین السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ali Al-Habib, coming live to you from the minor land of Fadak. Welcome to the Ali Al-Habib show. The narrations in the corpus of the sect that refers to itself as Sunni constitutes a warehouse of material for the enemies of Islam. This corpus that has accumulated material to which the enemies of Islam often quote and utilize in aspersing the Messenger of Allah, our beloved Prophet Muhammad, blessings be upon him and his progeny, and to attack our religion. Making films, making cartoons, and various materials and content online in order to attack our religion and defame our holy prophet. And they base these Scenarios, if in films or cartoons, or they base their contents, whether it's lectures or videos online, they base these on the most authentic so called sources of the Bakri sects or the sect that refers to itself as Sunni. And upon research, ladies and gentlemen, we found that most of these sordid narrations that calumniate and defame our holy prophets, debasing his, in, his reputation or an attempt to debase his reputation is narrated by a woman whom sadly the Ummah has been tricked by and deceived. You know who this woman is. She is the infamous Aisha, daughter of Abi Bakr. This infamous, this infamous woman who has narrated most of the narrations in Aspers to our Holy Prophet. Aisha narrated that the Prophet doubted his prophecy and deemed Angel Gabriel a devil. Aisha narrated the Prophet attempted suicide three times by jumping off a mountain. Aisha narrated the Prophet was bewitched. Imagine things to occur when they did not occur. Aisha narrated the Prophet forgot verses of revelation, which clearly indicates that that person, Ayyadan Billah, is a liar. As any test in the past that they undertake upon those who claim to be prophets or sent by God is the test of memory. Whether what they say remains in their hearts as 
is from the Prophet's qualities. Prophet's qualities. Not to forget the revelation of their Lord. In the past, they used to test prophets upon their claims of prophecy, of prophecy when or upon their memory of revelation. If they forget, then that's a clear indication that they are liars. And here Aisha, daughter of Abi Bakr, narrates that the Prophet forgot verses. He would come to a he would come inside a mosque, for example, and he would listen to, to one of his companions reciting the Quran. And supposedly then he would say, May Allah have mercy upon him. He had reminded me of verse so and so, while I, whilst I have forgotten it. Aisha narrates, The Prophet used to be intimate with me whilst I was on my period. Aisha narrates, the Prophet used to suck my tongue whilst I was fasting. Aisha narrates, the Prophet would let men enter upon me whilst in bed with him and dressed inappropriately. Aisha narrated, The Prophet would sleep on my lap whilst I was on my period. And all of these vile, obscene narrations. To which I make clear, ladies and gentlemen who are listening, that Islam is innocent from these fabrications. Islam has no link to the individual by the name of Aisha, daughter of Abi Bakr. Islam deems her an enemy of God and an enemy of his messenger. Islam deems her a liar. Islam deems her a hypocrite. Islam deems her a criminal. Islam deems her depraved and a wicked woman. Ladies and gentlemen, before we open the call lines, inshallah, I would like to present to you a short comparison. And upon this day, to which we commemorate the day of revelation for the Holy Prophet, blessings be upon him and his progeny, when he was ordered by Angel Gabriel through the command of Allah, or when he was ordered by the command of Allah through the Angel Gabriel, peace be upon him, to carry the message of his Lord and launch his mission in conveying there is no God but Allah. And Muhammad is his messenger. I would like to present to you this comparison between the instance which was the first of revelation from the Bakri corpus, from the book of Bukhari as an example, and between the books and narrations of the progeny of the Holy Prophet. Blessings be upon him and his progeny. I want you, ladies and gentlemen, to be honest with yourselves. Which of the narratives come to your heart? We are all going to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one day. There is no benefit. of making false claims. One day we will stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we will be asked for our actions and our beliefs. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala majazan 
says, didn't you hear? Why didn't you read the Quran? Didn't you hear so and so speaking? Didn't you hear? Didn't you hear that person speaking? Why didn't you research? Why didn't you read? Remove yourselves, ladies and gentlemen, from this cognitive dissonance. See the truth, and Allah, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will guide you, inshallah, if you ask Him. I will, inshallah, ask the director to play a video of a known uh, individual by the name of Dr. Yasser Qali. He will narrate to you the version or the Bakri version, the so-called Sunni version of the instance of the first of Revelation. I ask the director to play the video. He went to, he went to Ghari Hira and did what he always did, which was to meditate and pray to Allah and make dua and dhikr. When lo and behold, he saw a strange figure, a figure that exuded light. And that figure came close to him and then held him with both arms and squeezed him so tight that he could hardly breathe. And then he let him go. And he said, Iqra, Iqra, Iqra. So he said, Ma ana biqari. I don't know how to read. Remember, the Prophet did not know how to read and write. He was unlettered. He was not taught and he never learned how to read and write. So he said, Ma ana biqari. I don't know how to read. For the second time, the angel squeezed him so tight, even harder than the first time, that he could hardly breathe. Then he let him go. And he said, Iqra. And for the second time, the Prophet said, Ma ana biqari. For the third time, the angel did it, and then the angel said, Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. And then this angel disappeared. The Prophet ﷺ was struck with a type of terror and fear. You can imagine what would be your reaction when this being comes, strange being that you have never seen before, in the middle of nowhere, in the desert, in the wilderness, in a mountain, on a cave, on a mountain which nobody else could come to without you seeing that person climbing up. And imagine this being tells you, recite, and he squeezes you so hard, he became terrified. And he did what every normal human being would have done. He ran to his own home. He ran back to his house. And he went to Khadija. And he cried out to Khadija, Zammiluni, Zammiluni, cover me up. You know when you're scared, you are trembling, you are scared. Cover me up, cover me up. And so Khadija covered him with a blanket and said, what is the matter, what happened? So he told her what happened. He said, this and such and such happened. And he said, I was scared for myself. Meaning, what is the matter with me? Am I going to die? Is he going to kill me? Why am I seeing these things? He said, I was scared for myself. As you've listened, ladies and, gen and gentlemen, the individual by the name of Yasser Qadi narrates the story of the first of revelation. The first revelation that was sent to the Holy Prophet, blessings be upon him. It really sounds like a horror movie. Does this sound to you, ladies and gentlemen, as rational human beings? That's the creator of the universe. All these signs that we see, the creator of the moon, the creator of the sun, the oceans, the mountains, the trees. The creator of beings, the creator of creation would send, when he would send a, an angel or choose a prophet, would take these type of cer ceremony, ceremonial uh, customs. The first of revelation sounds to us as rational human beings as a terror movie. The Prophet goes to this cave called Hira and he does ta'abbut, he worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The angel comes down and the Prophet at this stage is what? Shivering? Afraid? 
he comes, Jibra'il alayhi salam, comes and squeezes him, squeezes him very tightly. Yes? The Prophet says, I can't breathe. I'm not able to breathe. Iqra! Read! I don't read. Read! I don't read. Squeezes him again until his soul is about to depart from his body. He says, he can't breathe at this stage. Read! I can't read. And then the verse comes down. The Prophet is terrified. He is shivering and he is cold. His teeth is closed, sweating. He runs back to his wife and he says, cover me, cover me. And he has doubts. And even at this stage, he doesn't know who, what that was, who that is, what is this about? We're speaking about the best of, cre the, the, the best of creation here. Our Holy Prophet, blessings be upon him. He doesn't know anything at this stage. He doesn't know what he saw, Angel Gabriel. Was he an angel or was he a Satan? Or was he Shaitan? As the narrations of Aisha says. The narrations of Aisha says that the Prophet had doubts whether that man, whether that thing, was a angel or was he a devil? And he's still not, not sure, he doesn't know what is, where are we, what is happening. He feels like he is hallucinating. So he goes to his wife, Sayyida Khadija alayhi salam, supposedly. He goes to her and he tells her the story. And she says, you know what? Yeah, this matter is a bit complex. We don't know what to do. So you know, I'm going to think, I'm going to take you to my uncle. Waraqa bin Nawthal. Bin Nawfal, a Christian priest. Ah, so ladies and gentlemen, why are we, we don't know this, how, we, we should thank the Christian priest. How did, we, how did we miss this, ladies and gentlemen? Throughout the centuries, we should have thanked the Christian priest at the time at least. Waraqa bin Nawfal, for confirming the prophecy of, or prophethood of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Otherwise we would have known. Prophet Muhammad may have thought that it was a devil. He may have thought that he was hallucinating. But the one who confirmed his prophecy indeed he was. Waraqa bin Nawfal. This is the narrations of Aisha. Yes. Now it's time, ladies and gentlemen, to bring forth to you the narrations of Ahlul Bayt Sallallahu And tell me, does that not enter in your heart and conscious consciousness? Do you not? What makes sense more to you, as rational human beings? First, tell me. I launch with you this short research, inshallah, before we open the calls. A Tawheed by Sheikh al Saduq, page 484. From Muhammad ibn Muslim and Muhammad ibn Marwan. From Abu Abdullah. Ja'far al Sadiq, blessings be upon him, who said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him and his progeny, knew Angel Gabriel, only knew Angel Gabriel from the tawfiq of Allah, from the divine direction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Through this narration, Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam negates that the one who confirmed his prophecy, or the prophet, the one that negates that the one who confirmed the prophethood of the messenger, blessings be upon him and his progeny, was Waraqa bin Nawfal. Rather, it was the divine direction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We move on. In Kamalu Deen wa Tamamu Ni'mah. And this is the narration that I wanted to really focus upon. Just compare the two narratives. Kamal al-Din wa tamam al-Nu'mah. 
الشيخ الصدوق هي says and most of our opposers say that the prophet used to fall on consciousness or unconscious due to angel Gabriel descending but one Imam al-Sadiq Jafar ibn Muhammad blessings be upon him was asked if the encompassed in unconsciousness of the prophet was due to Gabriel, to Gabriel he said no if Gabriel was to descend for the Prophet, he would not enter before seeking his permission. Angel Gabriel, before he attends to the Prophet to convey the message, the revelation, he seeks the permission of the Messenger of Allah. And if he were to enter upon him, if he were to be allowed to enter, he would sit before the Prophet, pay attention here, please, as a slave would sit before his master. Compare the two narratives here, please. From one angle, Angel Gabriel is a, ayah than a terrorist, yes? Shiv squeezing the soul out of the messenger. Iqra, read. I can't read. Read. I can't read three times, squeezes him, squeezes him. Absolute terror, blackness and darkness in the cave. And something comes up and squeezes you out of nowhere and you don't know what's happening, so you run to your wife. That's the narrative that Aisha wants us to believe in. And on the other hand, The narrations of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam the Ma'een al-Safi, the cleansed water, the purified water of knowledge. What does Imam say? He would sit before the Prophet as a slave would sit before his master. But what is this condition that used to encompass the Holy Prophet, blessings be upon him and his progeny? When he used to get un unconscious, because he, he did used to get unconscious. He did used to have this humility and, and shivenness. He did. But what was the cause of it? Was it Angel Gabriel? The Imam says no. But what, what is it due to? Imam continues in saying, Rather, the unconsciousness would encompass him when Allah the Almighty and sublim would address him without an intermediary. When Allah the Almighty would address the Holy Prophet, blessings be upon him, without an intermediary, without a wasita, without a person in between. When he hears the voice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, majazan, the created voice of Allah. Allah creates a voice. And, the, and, and this voice is sent, revealed to the Holy Prophet, blessings be upon him and his progeny. This is when the Prophet used to get unconscious. Refer, referring back to Tawheed by Shaykh al Sadduq, page 214, from Ubaid ibn Zurara, from his father, Zurara. Ibn Ayyan, who said, I asked Abu Abdullah, peace be upon him, may I be sacrificed for you? This is how our, the companions of the Imams, blessings be upon them, used to address the Imams when they want to ask a question or when they want to uh, say something in his presence. They start with, may I be sacrificed for you? What used to make the Messenger of Allah, blessings be upon him, swoon when he receives revelation? What makes the Messenger of Allah have this condition? Imam replied, that is when there, is, that is when there isn't an intermediary between him and Allah. That is when Allah manifests himself to him. He then 
said with deep humility. The Imam, as if he took a, a deep breath. And he said, such is prophethood, O Zulara. Such is prophethood. Ladies and gentlemen, please make the two comparisons now. From one angle, the Prophet goes to Hira, Angel Gabriel comes down at him or upon him, squeezes his soul three times to the extent that the Prophet is unable to breathe. Read, read, read. Horror movie, absolute horror movie. Imagine, imagine this dark cave. Read, I don't, I can't read. Read, I can't read. Then runs back to his wife, and he's still in doubt. He doesn't know what is this thing that he saw. Is this from God? Is this from Satan? I don't know. So who goes to, who confirms that you're a prophet? He goes to Waraqa bin Nawfal, bin Nawfal, a Christian priest. He says, Ithbit ya Muhammad. Be firm, O Muhammad. No, you're a prophet. You're a prophet. Of course, between two brackets, Waraqa bin Nawfal, we admire him and he became a Muslim after that. But this, this story is nonsense. This story is nonsense. And then when the prophet, when revelation stopped for a while, ala fatrasim min al-wahi, as Bukhari says, when the prophets, when the revelation stopped, according to us, revelation does never stop from the Holy Prophet, blessings be upon him in his project. We'll come to that in a moment. When the, when the revelation stopped, he couldn't handle it. He thought God has left him. So what did he do? He went back to the cave and he attempted suicide three times. Until Angel Gabriel came at the last, at the, at the third time and pushed him before he committed suicide or was going to commit suicide. What do the Christians and Jews and non-Muslims say about us when they listen to such nonsense? What do you say? I'm speaking here to the Bakris, those who refer to themselves as Sunnis. What do you say inside your heart and consciousness? And conscious? And conscience? What do you say? Is this, is this how the creator of the universe would take his ceremonial custom in sending a messenger to his creation? Is this something rational that you can believe in? A prophet commits, is going to commit suicide? A prophet gets his confirmation of prophethood from a Christian priest? A prophet that is terrified and, and shivering and scared and still in doubt whether he's a prophet or not, whether that person was, a, was an angel or was he a devil? According to our narrative, ladies and gentlemen, and I do apologize for taking some time. According to our narrative, when the Prophet was making his way to the cave of Hira, every stone, every tree, every leaf was bowing down to him. Jibra'il came down with humility upon the Holy Prophet, blessings be upon him and his progeny, revealing to him the verse, the first verses of Surah Al-Alaq. Iqra' bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq, khalaq al-insana min alaq. He came down with Mika'il and Israfil and 70,000 malat, 70,000 angels with humility to the Holy Prophet's blessings be upon him, revealing to him the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is more? Tell me, what is, what, ask yourself this question now. 
What is more rational to you? This deep respect from one angle and this, deep, this humiliation and, and, and nonsense from another angle. Ask yourself these questions, ladies and gentlemen. We will all die someday. And uh, it's best that we prepare ourselves. When the Prophet was first born, we have narrations. When the Prophet was first born, he prostrated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala immediately saying ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadar rasulullah or wa ashhadu anni rasulullah i bear witness that there is no god but allah and that i am his messenger the prophet says i was a prophet and adam was between was between water and clay look at the difference here the Prophet says in Al Kafi that I was a prophet whilst Adam was not even created yet. He was between, he was between water and clay, between water and mud. And these uh, unfortunately those who refer to themselves as Sunnis say that he was a pagan before the Prophet. He was a pagan. He was not a Muhad, he was not a Muslim. And to conclude, ladies and gentlemen, with swiftness, in Al Khisal by Shaykh al Saduq, page 314. From Muhammad, son of Umar, from his father, Umar, who said, I heard Ja'far ibn Muhammad, peace, <clears throat> peace be upon him, say, there were three, between two brackets, greatest liars who ascribed lies to the Messenger of Allah. Who are these three? The Shias know them. Abu Huraira. Anas bin Malik and Aisha. These three individuals were the greatest liars who ascribed lies to the Messenger, fabricated tons and tons of narrations to which the Islamophobes today and the enemies of Islam, the enemies of the Messenger, utilize in making making a mockery out of our religion. They say that the Prophet can't read. They say that the Prophet can't read. Yani the Christian man, at least Jesus, according to him, as God he says Jesus was not unlettered, illiterate. He can read at least. Yes? Whilst your prophet can't read. However, have you heard what Imam al Jawad السلام, said upon hearing such notion? From Imam al Jawad السلام, or from Ja'far bin Muhammad al Safwani, قال, I asked Abu Ja'far Muhammad bin Ali, Al Rida السلام, peace be upon them. So I said, O oh, son of the Messenger of Allah, why was the Messenger named Al Ummi? He replied, or he asked, what do the people say? What do the Bakris say? What do those who refer to themselves as Sunnis say? 
He replied, the companion replied, They claim Yaz'umuna, they claim that he was named Al Ummi because he did not know how to read nor write. Faqala alayhi salam. So Imam al Jawad alayhi salam said, Listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. Probably most of the Shias who are listening to me, to, to me right now, they probably have not heard this narration. Because the propaganda of such books, the propaganda of Bukhari and Aisha is very vast and wide and controlling and grasping, which surprisingly even Shias today, if I were to ask them, did the Prophet say upon, upon Jibra'il coming down and saying, Iqra, did he say, Ma ana biqara? He would say, yes, he would say, Ma ana biqara? He can't read. Imam al Jawad alayhi salam, upon hearing this, he said, Kadabu alayhim la'natullah. They have lied, may the damnations of Allah be upon them. Inna dhalika wallah. It is for why he was called Al-Ummi. It is for what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in his book. هو الذي بعث في الأميين رسولا منهم يتلو عليهم آياته ويزكيهم ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة وإن كانوا من قبل لفي ضلال مبين الأمي is an attribute or is a is an attribute to أم القرى which is مكة when we say al nabiyu al-Ummi, al nabiyu al-Makki, the Ummi Prophet, i.e. the Meccan Prophet. Not, that doesn't mean that he couldn't read. That does not mean that he was unlettered or illiterate. Then he says, Wallah. Wallah. The Imam is swearing here. He's, he's, he's swearing by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahi laqad kana rasoolullahi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi yaqra'u wa yaktubu bithnayni wa sab'ina lugha. The Prophet, blessings be upon him and his progeny. There is no lugha. There's just bithnayni wa sab'in. The Prophet, blessings be upon him and his progeny. By Allah. The Imam is swearing, by Allah, the prophets used to or, or knew how to write and read by more than 70 languages. From one side, he's a jahil, he's an ignorant who doesn't know how to read nor write, ayadhan billah, he's unlettered, illiterate. He doubts his prophecy. He wants to commit suicide three times. He gets confirmed. His, his prophecy gets confirmed by a priest. And according to us, the completely different narrative of Ahlul Bayt Sarihim When he went to Ghar Hira, every stone, rock, and tree bowed down to him with humility. When he got to the cave, or when he reached to the cave, he prayed, like I say, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jibra'il came down with humility to the Holy Prophet, blessings be upon him and his progeny. Coming down with Mikail and Israfil and 70,000 angels. This is the ceremony of prophethood. This is the ceremony of prophethood. Not some terrorist, dark, ceremony which shivers the Holy Prophet, squeezes him and, and until his soul is about to depart from his body. Ladies and gentlemen, we now open to you the show and we conclude this short research and I am glad, ladies and gentlemen, to have your calls. Um, I believe we, had, uh, we have our first caller right now. Brother Mustafa from Denmark, Assalamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Assalam, Rasulullah wa Barakatuh. Wa Alaikum Assalam wa Rahmatullah wa Barakatuh. Welcome, dear brother. Thank you very much. How are you, bro? Alhamdulillah. Welcome to the show, dear brother. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. In terms of the uh, topic at hand, which is of course the, um, you know, the generally the uh, the view uh, regarding the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam from the from our opponents, um, generally speaking, we can like, conclude or look at the, the way that they view the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as an individual who is basically fallible, um, but he is connected with God. Um, in essence, he he has um, lacks or de- deficiency in all things. And I I can't think of a single aspect where our opponents do not deem the prophet as being you know deficient in, in certain cases. They'll say yes, he's he's, he's only infallible in in why in revelation. And even that, subhanallah, uh, there is. Any yeah, questions regarding that uh, statement or that belief? Because we go back to the authentic reports or the authentic books, such as Bukhari and Muslim, we see that the Prophet based on what Aisha and Abu Bakr claims, where she states that um, that Rasulullah would forget verses and he would hear her companions reciting them, and he would say, "Rahimallahu fulan." And in some editions, uh, where the Prophet وسلم, supposedly states, "Kuntu qad asqatuha min al Quran." Sahih. Meaning that, meaning that, where the Prophet, the Prophet, yeah, even yeah. some of the verses from the Quran, he had, he, had, he had removed them. And we know that they are very, very, you know, harsh when it comes to the tah- to tahrif. So does that mean during these times when Rasulullah thought that verses X, Y, Z? Why not in the Quran? Does that mean that the Prophet Muhammad was a Catholic? Like, I don't really know like, how they even base their beliefs. I and mean, it's it's really uh, uh, a contradictory uh, belief system. As all the Arabs of Salama, Alhamdulillah, we have done all this, and we can now study the Quran. Ahsant, Ahsant, dear brother. Well said, dear brother. May Allah bless you, inshallah. And I hope, inshallah, the people who are listening, who are listening from the Bakri sects, from those who refer to themselves as Sunnis, listens to your words. And ponders greatly. And inshallah, Allah ask Allah, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide by your words these people, inshallah, to the light and nur of Ahlul Bayt and the true, authentic religion of Al Islam. May Allah bless you, dear brother. Thank you very much for your call. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. Dear brothers and sisters, I await your calls, inshallah. Um, I am more than happy to receive your calls and your input on this research. And tell us, ladies and gentlemen, those who are listening, which of the two comparisons, which of the two scenarios makes more sense to you as sincere researchers and seekers of truth which makes to you more more sense on this day ladies and gentlemen which is the day of revelation of the Holy Prophet, blessings be upon him and his progeny. Take this chance, seize this chance. Go after midnight, make wudu. Pray two rak'at for the Holy Pray two rak'at to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide you to the way of the Holy Prophet, blessings be upon him and his progeny. To guide you to be a true follower of Prophet Muhammad Many people have done so and many people, many of them have become Shia today. Colleagues at work right now. People from Maghrib, people from Libya, And many from around the world, from Brazil, from Spain, from Russia, from China, from Japan, 
from Germany, from the African countries, from Zimbabwe, from Ivory Coast, Brother Musa, who is now a worker or working, and he's my colleague in work. Many of these people from around the world embracing Shia Islam. Seize this chance, ladies and gentlemen. After presenting this research, please seize this chance to put critical thoughts, put critical thoughts to your beliefs. Think, ladies and gentlemen, think. Don't freeze your thoughts. Don't freeze your mind. Remove, remove the chains of cognitive dissonance from your mind. Break them off and start to think. And I promise you, you would come to Shia Islam. You would disassociate from the enemies of Allah. Read the Quran, please. Read Surah Tahrim. Read Surah Tahrim and ponder upon the verses. Look at the exegesis of these verses. You will see that Aisha, by the nas, by the stipulation of the Quran, is an enemy of Allah. She has deviated. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the verse, Sagata Fakat Sagat Kulu Bukuma. That your hearts, Aisha and Hafsa, have deviated from truth. Allah makes the comparison in Surah Tahrim with Aisha and Hafsa, or by Aisha and Hafsa, or to Aisha and Hafsa. He makes the comparison or the example of Aisha and Hafsa as the wives of Prophet Lut and Prophet Nuh. ضرب الله للذين كفروا امرأة نوح وامرأة لوط كانتا تحت عبدين من عبادنا صالحين فخانتاهما ولم يغنيا عنهما من الله شيئا وقيل ادخل النار مع الداخلين الله says I have set the example ضرب الله للذين كفروا I've set the example to those who disbelieve امرأة نوح وامرأة لوط the wife of the wife of Noah and the wife of Lot they were under two slaves of ours صالحين righteous so they betrayed them فخانتهما Aisha say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the example for those who disbelieved, i.e. Aisha and Hafsa, the wife of Prophet Noah and the wife of Prophet Lot. Ponder upon the verses of the Quran, hold on to the first, first thiqil, the first weighty thing that the Prophet holded us to hold on to. You claim to follow the Quran, wallahi you are far from the Quran. You do not know the Quran. Tell me, what Qur'an do you believe in? To which you say that the Prophet frowned at a blind man who came to him. Yeah? What would the Christian say? Once there was a Muslim man. Once there was a, Christ once there was a Muslim man debating a Christian. And he was trying to convince him to embrace Islam. Embrace Islam, follow the Holy Prophet. And they made the comparison between the personality and character of Jesus and the personality of char and character of our Holy Prophet. Blessings be upon him and his progeny, Prophet Muhammad. The Christian man said a golden word or a golden sentence, which still rings in my mind. After debating and having this heated debate, the Christian man said, on a calm note, in the end of the day, he said, in the end of the day, 
You want me to believe in a prophet that frowned when a blind man came to him and leave a prophet or a man who used to cure the blind. This is the consequence, ladies and gentlemen, of believing in the Sunni or so-called uh, Sunni narrative. The Prophet frowned. The Prophet frowned or it was Uthman ibn Affan. According to our narrations from Ahlul Bayt, it says that the man who frowned was Uthman ibn Affan. Uthman ibn Affan had made a gathering called all of the nobles of Quraysh and people from his tribe a meeting a private meeting to sit with the Holy Prophet blessings be upon him and his progeny suddenly Uthman ibn Mad'un the blind man comes uninvited so Uthman frowned at him he didn't want him to be present in this high meeting in this high you know uh, nobles meeting of nobles of Quraysh he frowned at him. He didn't want him to be there. This is the instance. This is the story. Be honest with yourselves, ladies and gentlemen. Be honest with yourselves and research what I'm saying. And by Allah, if you are sincere, inshallah, you will find truth. Inshallah. We have another caller who is with us. Brother Elias from Algeria. Wa rahmatullah, dear brother Ali. Wa alaykum as yes, this is, this is brother Elias from Algeria. Welcome, dear How brother. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah. Dear brother. And yourself. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Alhamdulillah. Shukrulillah. Just to uh, introduce myself, I'm I'm a convert. I was uh, I was a Wahhabi, let's say. And I'm a convert and I became a Shia. An Ithnachari Shia. A twelve. Alhamdulillah. And it's all due to the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I've, I've, I've seen a lot of things. I've seen a lot of, uh, let's say, a hadith, narrations, which I couldn't, like, I couldn't believe. I mean, they say horrible things about the Holy Prophet. I mean, I can't imagine a prophet with, with an image of someone who can't even, let's say, be jealous at, like, with his, like with his wives. A man who 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 is trying to to suicide, who tried to su to suicide several times, a man who's not even uh, let's say, uh, who who cannot keep himself uh, let's say stable or even or even uh, let's say uh, let's say clean, a man who is not stable in his mind. This is their prophet. This is their prophet. Our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa is the is the most noble, is the more is 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 the real man that we is the real prophet that we should follow, that we have to follow. I mean, Sahih al Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. I, I personally call them the uh, the, uh, the, the, the Dajjal of Bukhari. He is a Dajjal. I mean, he wrote yeah he wrote uh, uh, very horrible things about the Holy Prophet, which made a lot of my friends, my re my relatives convert to atheism they be they they became atheists because of this horrible horrible, like horrible narrations i mean i i really want to call people through your blessed show to read their books muslim people please read your books read the things that bukhari muslim and naysaburi termidi ahmad ibn hanbal and all of your scholars so-called scholars Read though what they wrote about your prophet, how they, let's say, insult your prophet. They insult your prophet. Like when we take an example of uh, of those atheists, those uh, Jew Jewish people, Jews, they really have arguments on you. They have arguments upon you. I mean, when they, for for instance, they see a. a prophet who who tried to suicide several times what do you what do you think they would say would they say oh mashallah this is a good man this is a stable man this is this is a, a wise man no of course no i mean this is like just one drop from the sea of the horrible things that i've seen this is one drop only 
I mean, uh, we have the, the 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 thing that I'm like really shy to mention, but I must mention, which is Erda al Kabir, like Erda al Kabir. This is something that I can't accept that a prophet could say or could uh, say guide people to do. This is something which I personally cannot cannot do. Of course. I mean, this is like this is uh, unacceptable at all, at all levels. This is a prophet. He is a prophet. How do you expect your prophet to be like this? Me myself, I I was a Wahhabi, let's say, because here in Algeria, Wahhabism is the uh, is the most let's say uh, uh, like the uh, all the people here, or say most of them are are Wahhabis here. Mm. When when I yeah yeah, but when I tell them what I've read, they just say no. This is not true. This is this book is uh, let's say uh, maybe uh, muharraf faked or something. No people, this is your books. This is your books. Come on, stop being ignorance. Read your books, please. This is Sahih al Bukhari. This is Sahih al Bukhari. Please try to read Aisha. Aisha's narration about the Holy Prophet. She tried to make the image of the Holy Prophet as horrible as possible. She's a corrupt woman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that her heart deviated. So subhanallah, Surah Al-Tahreem is, is, uh, is a, is a, is a dalil itself. Subhanallah, subhanallah. Yeah. So I really call all people to, uh, to for for instance, to compare the image of the Holy Prophet in our in our narrations, us Shia, uh, Shia of the Ahlul Bayt, and those narrations that your scholars, you Wahhabis, uh, Hanafis, wherever you are, just what the so-called Sunnis. I don't call you Sunnis. We are the, the real Sunnis. We are the real Sunnis. We Sunnis. we are the real follower of the Sunnah of, of the Holy Prophet. Not you. Sunnis. We are the real follower of the Holy Prophet. We are the, the ones who followed the guidance and, fo- and, fo- and, fo- and followed the orders of the Holy Prophet. We followed his, his family, his household, not you. So I ask you and I call you people to compare the image of the Holy, Pro- of the Holy, Pro- uh, the Holy Prophet uh, between the two sects, us and, in, and you. There is a huge difference. Our Prophet is not, it's not like your Prophet. Our Prophet is generous. Ghayur, who who has ghayra? Zealousness. Our prophet is, is is yes yes our 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 prophet is uh, someone who's 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 brave, not like your prophet who was afraid of Omar ibn Khattab. You have to you, like you have to to uh, do a, a a comparison between the two uh, the two images. I call all people to read their books, to read the the, uh, the their narrations, and inshallah, those who will seek the the uh, truth will find the truth, inshallah, and will follow the imams of the Ahlul Bayt, the true successors, the righteous successors, inshallah. Ah, Thank you so much, brother. brother Ali, for this for this chance. Well Thank said, you so dear brother. Well said, dear brother. May Allah bless you immensely, inshallah. May Allah bless you immensely, dear brother Elias. And I call the ladies, ladies and gentlemen, the dear viewers, to really ponder upon the words of brother Elias and walk in his footsteps. No true lover of the Holy Prophet, blessings be upon him and his progeny, would accept such narrations on us pursing our Holy Messenger degrading him, representing him in this way. Walk in the footsteps of your brother Ilyas in critical thinking. Utilize this ni'mah, this blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you with, which is to think Break the chains of cognitive dissonance from your minds. Release yourself. And compare the two scriptures. Compare the two scriptures. 
And if you are seeking the truth, and if you are truly seeking, seeking the pleasement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you would find the shayyah. The shayyah will be in your heart. Asma'akum, I listen to you. Inshallah. We have another caller. Let's take it, inshallah. Fahim, brother Fahim from Bangladesh. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Walaikum assalam. How are you, brother? Alhamdulillah, dear brother. Welcome to the show. Mm, okay. So, brother, I have some questions. Of course. Go ahead, inshallah. Uh, you see that uh, every single wife of our prophet is generous. Every single wife of our prophet is generous. I mean, great, isn't it, brother? No, we don't say that uh, every single wife of the Prophet, blessings be upon him, and his progeny uh, are generous or is generous. Uh, no. This is not and our... Why not, our, brother? Because we uh, follow the Qur'an in understanding and we follow the Sunnah. And we understood, and by reading history merrily, that no, not all the wives of the Prophet were generous. We have the mothers of the believers, the righteous wife of the holy, the wives of the holy prophets, such as Sayyida Khadija, blessings be upon her, as Sayyida Umm Salama, as Sayyida Mari al Qibtiya, as Sayyida Maymuna. They are the mothers of the believers on top of our heads. However, the other wives of the Holy Prophet, such as, for example, Aisha, Hafsa, Qatila bint Qais al Kindiya, Umm Habiba, they are, uh, we do not have any type of respect for them. Why? Because, number one, let's say, let's pick Aisha, for example. Aisha, she used to. Annoy our Holy Prophet, blessings be upon him. Discomfort him. She used to lie against him. And one of the lies that we presented in this research today is that the Prophet was going to commit suicide three times. The Prophet had doubt in his prophet in his prophethood. He did not know whether he was a prophet or not. And he had to confirm it from a Christian priest. He did not know whether Angel Gabriel was an angel or a devil. He... And all, the, all, of, all of the other things that we mentioned in the beginning of the research, where we said, or where we stated, that Aisha had so much lies against our Prophet, stating that he used to be intimate with me whilst I was on my period. I, the, the Prophet was bewitched. And other lies of the Holy Prophet, blessings be upon, against our Holy Prophet, blessings be upon him and his progeny. And if we follow and read carefully the narrations of Aisha, their brother, Fahim, we realize, especially whilst reading the full history, that she was a woman that did not have any type of honor. She used to let men enter upon her, teach them how to do ghusl, teach them how to do, you know, bathing, teach, teach them how to do ghusl, bath, the... the the required ghusl that a man needs to do, and a woman. She led an, a, a colossal army against our Imam, Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib. She came out with a flag against the Imam of her time, against Ali ibn Abi Talib, causing a mass bloodshed, killing over 30,000 Muslims. How, can, how do you expect us to, rep to respect such woman, dear brother. When the Quran also tell, says in Surah Tahrim that her heart, her and Aisha's heart, have deviated from truth. Mm, uh, brother. Yes, dear brother. Uh, in Quran, there is a verse about uh, Aisha, about the um, about her, what can I say, honesty, where um, from the a story where a prophet was coming from a 
battleground and Aisha was lost and after that Aisha was found in her home and everyone said bad things to her but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had sent some verse and said that Aisha was true and uh, honest. Uh, what will you explain in this can, case? Can I, ask you, can I ask you, from where did you get this um, story from, this narrative? Um, from a, uh, uh, from our, some of the, our books, okay. When you, read, when you read these books, who was telling you, who was narrating the story to you? Okay, I don't know who is the narrator, but uh, isn't it true that there is some verse about Aisha in Quran? No. If there is verses regarding Aisha, it's, for, it's, it's verses of Aitab. Verses that came down against her, proving her deviancy. The verses that you're referring to, dear brother, are actually uh, referring to a Sayyida Mary al Qiptiya, Mary the Coptic, the wife of the Holy Messenger. This, this story that you've narrated which is from Bukhari, is a fabricated in, uh, incident. And if we were to look at all of the, because this is, this is something that is, this is how researchers conduct their research as they rather. We realize that these stories, this, this incident, all of the incidents of Ifk, where supposedly Aisha was, was accused of, you know, being with another man. We realize that all of these stories, all of these incidents are narrated from one individual. Who is it? It is Aisha. And that doesn't give us confidence whether these verses came down upon her or revealed about her, exonerating her or not. Because when someone says, yani how can we accept an individual praising himself without anyone narrating it other than him? And this is a big story here. Medina was absolutely, the city of Medina was, there was so much dialogue and discussions and tensions, talk of it. The wife of the Prophet supposedly was been with, is been with another man and she is, you know, accused of a great sin. We're supposed to have so much people narrating the story to us that this story, yes, it came down upon Aisha. This, these verses on Surah Nur came down revealing the exoneration of Aisha, yet none of them narrated the story. But who narrated the story to us? It is Aisha herself. And how can we accept the narration of a woman, firstly praising herself, secondly no one narrated the story confirming her narrative, thirdly this woman is a liar, this woman admits to lying in Sahih al-Bukhari itself. In Sahih al-Bukhari itself, Aisha narrates that I lied to the Messenger of Allah. He came to me and I said that I smell from you a disgusting fragrance whilst he was, whilst he would, he was drinking honey in the house of Zainab bin Tijash. The known story where the Prophet وآله, went to one of, one of his wives called Zainab bin Tijash and he drank honey in her house. Aisha says, I went, I told Hafsa that when he comes back, let's tell him that I smell from you a disgusting fragrance. So he doesn't go there anymore. When, when the Prophet went, he went to Aisha's house. Aisha admits to lying. She says, yes, I went to the Prophet. And I told him, I smell from you a disgusting fragrance. So these three points that I mentioned clearly indicates that this story is a fabrication. What is the real story? What is the real story in Surah Nur? It's, it's Surah Nur, or, or the verses in Surah Nur, the 24 verses as far as I recall, uh, revealed in Surah Nur, were revealed about Mary the Coptic. And I want you, dear brother, to listen to me now. And I want you to really think with me, brother Fahim. Which is more oh, rational brother. to you? No, no, let me, let me, allow me to, to just, you know, explain, explain this to you. So you can see the, the two yeah. different, different events. Which is more rational to you? A story narrated to you by Aisha that no one confirms it, she is praising herself, and she is known to be a liar, or a different story, a more rational story, regarding the wife of Prophet Muhammad, Mary the Coptic. It is known that the Prophet Muhammad, blessings be upon him and his progeny, did, did not bring an offspring 
by other than his first wife Khadija. 13 years, or 10 years at least, 10 years, no 13 years, 13 years when he was in Medina, he had many wives. He had Umm Salama, he had Sayyidah Maymuna, he had uh, uh, Umm Habiba, he had Sahla, he had Suwayda, he had some other, other wives, Qatila, ila ghayri dhalik. He had, he had many wives, and some count up to 13, some count up to 10, some count up to, up to 9. None of them held enough spring from the Holy Prophet, let be upon him and his progeny. But when the Prophet married Mary the Coptic, a Sayyida, Mary al Qiptiya, peace be upon her, the mother of the believers, she suddenly brings, brings a child for him. Whose name is? Do you know? Uh, no. His name is Ibrahim. The Prophet had a son named Ibrahim after years of uh, whilst he was married with, other, with, with his other wives however he did not bring uh, an offspring from, from them. After years of no offspring from his other wives suddenly in, this, in, in the last years of the Holy Prophet and he was very old at the time around 60, 60 something or towards 60 years old he marries uh, Lady Maria, the Coptic, and he brings from her this son, Ibrahim. Ibrahim, son of Prophet Muhammad. What do you think the other wives would, would say? What do you think the initial reaction of the other wives who've been with the Prophet all these years and haven't been successful in, in, in holding his offspring? What do you think comes to first, comes to, to their, to the, what, what is their first initial reaction upon hearing such jealousy? They are jealous. Jealousy. Yes, they are jealous. They don't want. They they are jealous that this woman suddenly comes, and she holds the offspring of the best of creation, the Messenger of Allah. Whilst we was his wives for years, unsuccessful in holding his offspring, in carrying his offspring. Jealousy. Okay. So Aisha, brother, well, I, I'm finishing now. Aisha, okay, okay, and Hafsa, and Abu Bakr, and Umar, and a group of Isaba. In الَّذِينَ جَاءُوا بِالْإِفْكِ عِصْبَةٌ مِّنْكُمْ As the Quran says. Those who bought ifk, you know, you know, you know, attributing fornication or adultery to one of the wives of the Prophet was a gang amongst you. Was a, you know, bunch of thugs, let's say, amongst you. The leaders of those who were saying that, the, that Maria, Mar Maria, the Coptic, had committed Billah, fornication or adultery was Aisha and Hafsa accusing her of adultery. Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed his, his verses from the, from the seven heavens above in exonerating Lady Mary, the Coptic, from this heinous claim. This is the story of if of, you, of, of, of okay, brother. If you Aisha, Aisha is a liar, dear, dear brother. I, this, this, these verses did not come out on uh, uh, revealing or exonerating Aisha. They came down revealing Mary the Coptic, and this is a more a more rational example, or a more rational answer, or, or developing of sequence of events. Is that not? Tell me, dear brother. Okay, brother. If you say about jealousy to the other wives, isn't it the jealousy to the other wives? Yes. Okay, then why would you mention uh, Hafsa and Aisha more than other wives? All of them were jealous, but why would you, or why would us, or why would anyone... I never said that all uh, the other wives were, were jealous, all of them. I said most of them. All of them? No, Umm Salama was not jealous. Yeah. Sayyid, uh, yeah, most of, Sayyidah Maimuna was not but, jealous. Yes, but we don't mention most of them. We just mention two of them. Why right? do we mention both um, to these two? Because these were the heads. Just two, huh? These were the heads. It is natural. It's a natural inclination of human beings to attribute such any 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 claim or any instance or any action to the heads of those who carry these actions, not the followers. The followers are merely followers. They are sheep. In the end of the day. For example, okay, so you. For example, when 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 you when you try to, for example, you know, speak against the uh, France or the French government in making the, you know, uh, allowing permitting the these cartoon. cartoons. Yes, you straight away go to Macron. Yes, yeah. you attack Macron. You put an, you know a, a shoe on his face and etc. You don't go for the people around him 
who made these things happen, who actually caused, who made this, this action, caused it to, to spread and take a mass, uh, let's say, ring worldwide. It is a natural thing yeah, there. Brother, I understand, I understand, but uh, would you please mention all the names of the right and the wrong wives? The right, as far as we uh, believe, and what is uh, proven proven by authentic sources the wives the, ho the the wives of the holy messenger blessings be upon him and his progeny whom are righteous whom are the mothers of the believers are number one lady khadija sayyida khadija and she is amongst four of the greatest women second a sayyida umm salama umm salama Peace be upon her, yes. the, mother, the mother of the believers, who let her son, his name is Umar, she gave him to Imam Ali salam to, to be sacrificed for his cause. This is Umm Salama. The, sec, the third, the third is Sayyida Maymuna, Lady Maymuna, blessings be upon her, the mother of the believers, and she was a supporter, and she remained firm after the Holy Prophet, blessings be upon him and his progeny, in her uh, loyalty or in her, you know, in calling for the rights of Imam Ali salam as successor after him, Lady Maymuna, Sayyida Maymuna. And the fourth is Mary the Coptic, a Sayyida Maria al Qiptiya. These four women, as I've mentioned the names for, uh, to them to you, are proven yeah. by Quran and Sunnah that they were righteous and remained loyal to the Prophet, blessings be upon him and his progeny, after his death. The rest, the rest, number one, Aisha, Hafsa, second, third, Ummu Habiba, and the, the rest of them are, at least, at least Aisha and Hafsa and Ummu Habiba and some other, uh, some other wives, they are proven, they are proven to be, number one, hypocrites, number two, liars, Number three, betrayers to the Holy Prophet, blessings be upon him and his progeny, and people of deviation. Okay, brother, if someone is named Aisha, what uh, your community should do? There is no problem with naming the name of Aisha. There isn't, we don't have a problem with the name, dear brother. We have a problem with the, with the character. Okay. Yeah, there is a news. Somebody says that's a rumor. Somebody says that's real. But it seems realistic because it was a live program that name uh, uh, with Aisha, Omar, and others were uh, directly killed down in Iraq. What will you say about them? You must have uh, watched you say them. That you, you say that, that Shia has killed Aisha and Hafsa, Hafsa just because of names? This is not untrue, but their brother. This is, what, this is not what we do. This is f very funny because this is exactly what the terrorists in ISIS, in, in Iraq, uh, used to do to us. Now they're trying to turn it on us. Look at, look at, the, look at the humorous yani, claim here. It is us yeah, who, used to get, well, who, who used to get killed because of our names, Ali, Hassan, Hussein. Throughout history, dear brother, I can bring you tons of examples through history. Because of the name Ali, he was killed. Because of the name Hussein, he was killed. Because of the name of Hassan, he was killed. Now they want to turn it to us that any person whose name is Aisha, uh, or her name is Aisha, or, her na or his name is Umar, uh, Abu Bakr, for example, although it's a Kunya, Uthman, he gets okay, killed. Brother, this is untrue. I, brother, brother just to it? let you know, we have an individual here. He's an Iraqi, he's a Shi'i, and, and, and you know, his grandfathers are Shi'a also. His name is Umar, and he's, a, he's my colleague in work. Omar, we don't have a problem with the name, dear brother. We don't have a problem with these things. This is the lies. This are, look, you've, you've, you, you, you still, you're, you're filled with, with the lies that, you, that they've told you about the Shia. You're filled with them. Okay, okay brother. Uh, if, uh, what can I say? If name is not a problem, then have you ever heard of a cake with na a name written Aisha and Aisha go to hell and something like that on a cake? Sorry, can you repeat what you said? Sorry. A cake named Aisha go to hell, and this cake was uh, the picture of the cake was made viral. Cake, okay. I think, yeah, yeah, cake. Yeah. Yeah. What's uh, the problem? I, I, I think you know about the cake. Yeah, that yeah, a cake. yeah I know about the cake. 
Yes. Yes. What do you will tell about this? What is the issue with with this? Do you have evidence that is, it is haram to write a cake and to put on a cake? No, 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 not, not. Yeah, that is that is haram. But uh, can you writing, tell me? Can you tell uh, me how is it haram? What's the evidence from the Quran um, and Sunnah that, is, that it is haram to write a cake to make a cake saying Aisha is in hell? Okay, no, I am not going to cake, okay. but I am going to uh, write down someone's name and telling uh, him to uh, uh, go to hell. What's 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 the issue with this? Would you, do you would if, if I if I were to write uh, if I were to make a leaflet and I write Abu Lahab is in hell, would I is that haram? Okay, so do you? Uh, if I make a cake, if I make a cake and I write Abu Lahab is in hell, would that be haram? Uh, I don't know about the cake, but would you support that a wife of anyhow is bad, she's good, she's bad, she's the worst, but uh, he's best, he's good, he's worst, anything, but he, uh, I mean, she is a wife of uh, our prophet. So, um, is her name uh, can be written in a cake, letting... Uh, writing, brother, uh, writing, brother, go, brother, do you go. do you respect the wives of the Prophet uh, Noah and Lot? They are the wives of the Prophet. All of them. All of them. You respect the wives of Noah and Lot, their brother? Yeah, all of them, brother. Uh, are you aware that the Quran, the Quran is not, unfortunately not with me right now. Are you aware that the Quran says that the wife of Noah and, and Lot are in hell? Uh, yeah, I don't know, but, but you, yeah, you can't. T t yeah, but uh, I, uh, to my little knowledge, I know that nobody can uh, say uh, anyone related to uh, uh, related to a holy man directly go to hell. You don't know that uh, Aisha is really in hell or others are really in hell, isn't it? No, I do know, dear brother. I do know. Alhamdulillah, I do know. I ta I've taken my, my narrations from the, from the progeny of Holy Prophets and they've clearly told me that Aisha is now in hell for the actions and crimes that she has committed. Dear brother, your, your, um, your view has become clear and inshallah I will respond to you. There's many callers on the line. I'd like to uh, take other callers inshallah. Um, thank you very much for your call, brother Fahim. If there's a caller on the line, let's take one last caller if possible. Um, just as a quick note, just as a quick note, inshallah, um, clearly that the brother is, uh, the brother is, isn't aware of, of um, you know, the basic fundamentals of um, Islam and, and yani, let's say the basic fundamentals of, of Quran, the knowledge of the Quran. If he had read the Quran, he would not have said such things. He says that the, we have to respect all the wives of the prophets. Well, do we respect the wives of prophets and, uh, Prophet Noah and Lot? No, we do not, of course. The Quran says that they are in hell, kafiratan, that they are disbelievers, but they are wives of the Holy Prophet. So what do we do now? What do we do? Do we respect them because they are wives of the Holy Prophet? I like with Aisha and Hafsa. Ma kuntu bid'an min al-rusul. I am not different than the other prophets. The, the wife of Prophet Noah was bad and she is in hell. There is not an issue if we say that the wife of Prophet Muhammad وآله, specifically Aisha and Hafsa for example whom are the heads are disbelievers and are, in, and are in hell. What is the issue with this? It is the mantiq of the Quran and I challenge anyone to, to, to come and debate me on this matter. Let them come and debate me upon Aisha. Let them come and let's have a discuss. Forget debating, leave debating put aside because no one wants to debate now. Let's just have an honest discussion. Let's just see, is Aisha an enemy of God or a righteous woman that we should love and follow? Is Aisha an enemy of God whom we should disassociate from? Or is she a righteous woman whom we should all follow? Let's have that discussion under that title. And I, am, I welcome whoever to come and call on the show reach out to the Rafila email, call for a debate or a discussion, I am more than happy to take this discussion or debate. If we have another caller, ladies and gents, uh, dear brother, 
ma there is no any other call on the line because I believe there was many. I see, no problem. Uh, dear brothers, I have to apologize to the callers who attempted to get a line. Um, we will have to conclude this show, um, and inshallah, I will inshallah be, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us life, I will be with you inshallah in the following week. Same time, Friday inshallah, 8, 8 p.m., where I will be happy to uh, take your calls and discuss with you in a new research, in a new program. Uh, and inshallah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show us the light and guide us to the path of the righteous in following Muhammad, blessings be upon him, and his purified progeny and disassociating from the lies and fabrications of their enemies. Until next week, هذا وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين ولعنة الله على قتلتهم وأعدائهم أجمعين.